Hello, my name is Greg Cotto. I'm the Gross Receipts Tax Director for the Office of the Treasurer and Tax Collector here in the city and county of San Francisco. Today, I'm going to be going over a, an example of how to file your 2015 San Francisco Gross Receipts Tax and Payroll Expense Tax Annual Return. This example is for a retailer that is located exclusively in San Francisco and only has gross receipts in San Francisco. In this example, this uh, business is going to be in uh, the business activity of retail trade. It's going to have uh, 10 employees and it's going to have about a million dollars in uh, annual gross receipt in annual payroll expense, excuse me. And then uh, we are going to show uh, that it has about $10 million in San Francisco gross receipts. It has no gross receipts outside of the city, and it's going to be using the online easy form, uh, which is a simplified filing for those taxpayers that don't have any deductions or exclusions that they're going to be claiming. So this letter here is, uh, is the notice that you'll receive from our office. Uh, here it just has a um, um, uh, just the uh, name and address uh, that are going to be filled in with when we uh, send this to you. And in particular, I want you to notice on the top right the business account number and the online PIN. Those are the uh, two of the three items that you'll be needing in order to log in. The third item is your tax identification number, which is usually the last four digits of your uh, employer identification number, taxpayer identification number, or social security number, whichever is on file with our office. Now I'm going to switch over to the uh, screen for the treasurer's office. So um, as it's stated in the letter, you go to um, sftreasure.org, and here we are on our main web page. And right here on the left side of the screen, it says File Online Gross Receipts Tax and Payroll Expense Tax Annual, annual Return. And this will bring you to a landing page that has uh, some information about uh, if you're exempt from filing, uh, that you can go ahead and disregard this and you can exit now. Uh, if you need a 60-day extension to file beyond the February 29th deadline, you can go ahead and access that uh, through this link here. Uh, we also have links to instructions and then an opportunity to enter the filing. So go ahead and click on the link to enter the filing. And this brings you to our landing page. Uh, this, uh, again, uh, has the due dates on it. Um, it has links for you to update your account in case you want to update your mailing address or other information about your business. It reminds you that you, again, need your business account number, your tax identification number, and your eight-digit PIN. And if you're going to be paying online, you'll need your credit card or check-in account information. Uh, you must uh, complete each of the sections before moving on, and you can enter and exit at any time. We, and then uh, your filing is only complete when you see this pop-up window uh, here. Again, this is a sample, but uh, it'll say that your filing's been submitted and will prompt you to continue. So I'm going to go ahead and enter an example, a sample of um, a login information. Okay, now we're logged in, and I uh, just want to take you through some of the uh, um, new features uh, for this year and some uh, that return. Uh, the first is that uh, we now have a link to our instruction booklet on every page. So if you go ahead and click here, it'll pop up a new window that has our entire uh, instruction booklet, uh, and um, it's a web page uh, on our website. Uh, we also have a link to our uh, technical uh, issues page. Uh, so it allows you, if you're seeing um, some um, error messages or something that doesn't make sense, that, that's more of a technical issue uh, that allow you to uh, troubleshoot there. Uh, we also have an exit button. Anything that's been saved so far will uh, be um, saved. And if you hit exit, this will go ahead and uh, take you out of the, out of the form. Uh, and you can come back later and finish it. Um, just as in past years, we have a save and continue button that allows you to move forward. If you move forward inadvertently and you, and you need to go back just one screen, you can hit the back button here on the left. At the bottom of the screen, we have a progress bar that allows you to orient yourself within the filing. And then here on this side here, 
um, we have on every page your business account number, uh, the business name. This is a test account, so it has this. And then um, this is uh, just for internal use. Uh, um, it's uh, the identification number of your filing session. As you're going through the filing, uh, you're going to see these tabs on top. Um, if a, you need to progress sequentially through the filing, but as you complete the filing, uh, those sections will be marked in green, and the section that you're currently in will be marked in blue. You can go backwards in the filing, uh, back to the beginning, uh, but um, you can also, but you can't um, jump forward. But uh, this will allow you to go to major sections of your filing rather than just page by page if you were doing the back button. So uh, on this first page, A1, it's uh, called business identification. Uh, there are two survey questions here, and you'll see that they are hyperlinked so that if you click on them, it takes you right to that question in the instruction booklet uh, so you don't have to hunt around for it. And here we're going to ask if this business has taxable business personal property. We'll answer yes. And then the average number of employees, uh, that's answer, we're going to answer 10 since those are the facts for this business. Click Save and Continue. We're now into the filing questionnaire, page A2. And what this is uh, doing is, uh, is uh, it's your opportunity to select which um, um, path you're going to be taking with your filing. And so it's a guided path so that you're uh, doing the filing that's correct for you. So the first question is, are you filing as a lesser of residential real estate? That's a residential landlord. So since this is a retailer in these facts, I'm going to answer no. Uh, this is going to ask, do you qualify for a tax credit, a payroll expense exclusion, or limit? In this case, no. This taxpayer does not. And then finally, the question is, uh, this is a choice. Um, you can select yes if you want to use the simplified online easy filing. Um, otherwise, you'll select no for the standard filing. So the qualifications for the online easy include doing business as a single business in a single business activity exclusively in San Francisco. Um, and... Um, and then also not having any activities outside of San Francisco uh, in not claiming any deductions or exclusions. So this is really, um, it, um, the majority of businesses actually uh, have used this in past years and um, it, it fits the needs for many businesses that aren't uh, claiming any deductions. So we're gonna go ahead and answer yes since this is a simple filing um, under these facts. Then we're on to um, section B. And this is uh, to uh, determine if you qualify for the tax on administrative office business activities. This is for very large businesses with over a thousand employees and uh, over a billion dollars in uh, worldwide gross receipts. So first question is, do you employ over a thousand employees as of December 31st, 2015? Of course, the answer is no for the, um, this business. So we'll say and continue. And then we're taken into the payroll expense tax filing. So here we're going to enter the number of employees that we had in San Francisco, which is 10. And then we're going to enter the payroll expense, which is 1 million. And we'll click save and continue. So this business has a um, million dollars in payroll expense. There are uh, no exclusions. Uh, if uh, they had them, uh, they would be summarized here. By far the most common exclusion is the net new payroll exclusion for uh, small businesses with less than half a million dollars in payroll expense uh, that show some growth uh, in uh, year to year. Uh, they may see a small exclusion there. Um, and then, uh, so the net uh, payroll expense is $1 million. And so the tax rate for this year, 1.162% is applied, and your total ex payroll expense tax before credits is therefore uh, $11,620. So click Save and Continue. So here we're into the online easy for the gross receipts tax filing. And so what we'll do is select the business activity from this drop-down list of 20 items. So we'll do retail trade for this retailer, and we'll enter the total gross receipts. As I mentioned before, it's $10 million. And tabbing out, I just uh, um, will show you how the um, tax is calculated. So it shows every progressive rate for retail trade and the tax at those different rates, summing that up. And to line F here, and then uh, applying the 25% adjustment for tax year 2015. So we come at a tax liability 
of about $3,000. We click Save and Continue. So now we're taken to the Obligation Summary page. Here this shows your payroll expense tax and this taxpayer's uh, gross receipts tax. And then uh, line three is the summary after credits, had there been any. And then um, here on line four is where you can input your payroll expense tax and your gross receipts tax installment payments that you've made throughout the year. You would enter the sum for each of these taxes on this line. Our office has provided a, a summary of this in your uh, notice to file uh, for your information if you'd like to use it here. Um, or you can just input the sum of the amounts that you've paid to our office. Um, in this case, um, um, we're going to hold off on that for a moment, and I'm going to walk you through the penalties, interest, and fees. Uh, if you are filing late, lines 6 through 9 are going to have all of those penalties added automatically, um, and then you'll arrive at your net amounts for each tax, and then it'll add those two together for your total obligation due. Just so I can show you... Um, what happens if you happen to have an overpayment in your taxes, early installment payments. Um, I put in $15,000 there, and then you see that this uh, checkbox has appeared with this text. And what this is saying is you have to leave this box checked if you want your money refunded from your overpayment. If you have an overpayment and you do not check the box, then you have to file a separate request for refund or else you will forfeit your refund. We will not carry this forward to future years. So if you uh, want that refund, leave that box checked. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and zero this out so you can see how the, um, the payment uh, portal works um, um, and see how to print out uh, your payment stub. Um, so we're back to zero and we owe about $14,000. So then um, uh, you also have the opportunity to uh, check this box to designate 2.6% of your total tax amount to your the Neighborhood Beautification and Graffiti Cleanup Fund, otherwise known as the Community Challenge Grant Program. If uh, you would prefer to designate a, a different lesser amount, uh, you may uh, change that here. Um, you can uh, adjust that down, uh, write in a different number. Uh, the As long as it's up to 2.6% of your total tax amount. Um, Either way, it doesn't change your tax obligation. It just designates the amount of uh, taxes that are uh, put towards this program. So now we'll go ahead and click Save and Continue to move on to the signature page. And here is the taxpayer statement page. This is where I sign. So I'm going to go ahead and input my information here. And we'll put a title. And... And my press. And no need in this final area uh, to fill this in unless you're filing on behalf of another uh, person, like if you're a tax preparer. Just uh, to quickly note something uh, here, uh, right before you actually submit the filing, you can do a quick view of your filing data that was submitted and it'll pop up a new window that is a summary of everything that you input. So you can have this, you can, um, uh, so you can do a quick double check. We're going to be emailing um, this information to uh, this email address here anyway, but just in case you wanted to see it before you submit it, and I'll go ahead and hit submit. And here our filing has been submitted. So we'll go ahead and click continue. And now uh, we're on to the payment options screen and accessing your return. So uh, here, this first button is how you pay. You can uh, download a copy of your filing, uh, which has that information there. And then you can also email us to another address. So let's say I pop this up. I type in an email address, and then it would uh, send it to that one. So say I had a client or a colleague that I wanted to send that to. The download button uh, pops up um, this so you can save it. Um, you can print it or do whatever you like with it. But I'll go ahead and go to the payment options right now. And here we are. Um, this is a test account, so you'll see it has a lot of uh, items here. But I'm going to go ahead and select the payroll expense tax and gross receipts tax amount. Uh, so you can see that here. And uh, what we're going to see is that um, 
it, we have the amount due here in this right column, and then there's the amount to pay. So what can happen here is let's say that um, you decide that you want to pay a different amount um, than uh, the amount that's due. You can go ahead and change that amount if you'd like. Um, and just know that uh, any unpaid amounts will continue to accrue penalties and interest uh, after the due date. So I'm going to go and leave it the same. And then um, I could have the option to uh, do a credit or debit uh, electronic check. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and print a payment stub and uh, pay by mail. And here we go. I've got my invoice here that has my information. And then what I do is I just uh, print this out. And then I mail it in with my check. Um, all of the payment instructions are uh, here, uh, particularly for paying by check. Um, you uh, do uh, uh, to this P.O. box, and it'll uh, get there. You can also uh, deliver it by hand uh, during business hours. Of course, uh, uh, sending to our P.O. box does allow you to get that postmark there. So. That is the filing. Um, I hope that you have found this to be helpful. Uh, we are going to be producing other um, examples um, and providing links for them as well. Um, and uh, just as a quick reminder, uh, these um, facts here that I've presented are uh, just specific to the situation. You may actually have different facts and uh, that might affect your tax filing. So definitely consult your uh, your tax professional uh, if you have questions about your specific situation. Uh, but as you can see, it's a, uh, it can be a relatively straightforward tax filing experience. So uh, thank you again for watching.